Is that okay, sir? Onto the bone, the surrounding bone, uh, to fix the fracture. So it it's not uh, uh, it does not have a direct relation to the type of fracture, uh, but it's very important to know the the size of the screw. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, now we go to the uh, second section of uh, the presentations uh, tonight with uh, Professor Saeed Altani uh, from United Arab Emirates, the former uh, president of the Emirates Orthopedic Association. Uh, Professor Saeed will speak about management of bone loss in fracture fixation. Welcome, Professor Saeed. Welcome, uh, Dr. Mohammed. Uh, thank you for the invitation. I'm honored to join you tonight. Uh, in this event. Uh, so we know that uh, uh, bone loss is a, is a big problem when we deal with the fractures. So the objective from this presentation, we'll talk about consensus for a critical size bone defect and diagnose and treatment. Uh, then is the, limb sal is the limb salvageable? That's a question we always ask with the initial management. A muscular technique, how and when to use, bone graft sources, uh, vascularized uh, free fibula graft, and uh, destruction osteogenesis with all different modalities like Elizarov, bone rail, bone transport over plate, and uh, transport nail uh, slash plate. So, when we talk about hysterically, patient uh, would a fracture with a significant bone loss usually treated by amputation. Then the question will be attempting a limb reconstruction. Usually require a surgery which is technically difficult, time consuming, physically and psychologically demanding for the patient, and there is no guarantee for a satisfactory outcome usually can end up with non-union, angular deformity, osteomyelitis, or a ligament discrepancy. This is most of the outcome that happen. So, it's a different, different choices between amputation and reconstruction, and we're wasting, investing a lot of money. Then, Talking about a defect, what we mean by the size of defect, most of the surgeons, they don't agree on the true definition of uh, a big size or small size. It's always relative. And most of them agreed that any defect larger than one to two centimeter could be a critical size bone defect. And uh, greater than 50% loss of the circumstances of the bone and usually this loss depends on the anatomic location, whether it's in the facial, metaphysial, or in the articular surface. And uh, usually also depends on the soft tissue status. How this happened? As we know, it's mostly through an open fracture, uh, whether it's segmental, or post debridement, or blasting injury like uh, Dr. Servinas was presenting uh, early. Abdomenology, it's relatively rare. Among all fracture, it's only 0.4, which is good. And among all open fracture, it's 11.4%. Majority of these are grade 3B gastello injuries and a smaller number with the gastello grade 3C. 70% or 68% of all fractures happen in the tibia and 22 in the femur and the rest 10% scattered through the other parts of the body. That's why these cases is not that common. It happened in a small number, which make a high level evidence study uh, uh, to have a guidelines and treating them is very difficult. So when we talk about initial assessment, we have to stabilize the patient, the patient before the limb. So we need to make sure that the patient is resuscitated and hemodynamically stable. We have to remember this. And then we have to check the limb and see how is the fracture and what is the status vascularly and neurologically. And we have to ask our question, 
is the limb salvage? Can we salvage this? Or is it salvageable? The, the extremity severity score, the mangled uh, masses, and uh, the limb salvage index, and the predictive salvage index, they are not that specific. And, and getting the outcome uh, the, in regard to the patient satisfaction. Different, there's a big difference between surgeon satisfaction and patient satisfaction. And patient, maybe after two years of, of multiple surgery, he's no better than having an amputation. So we always have to ask ourselves what we can do. Uh, Ganga Hospital have an open injury score, which is uh, very thorough and talk about the skin and fascia, muscular skeletal nerves and bone and joint. And this is the goes by the severity with the scoring system to predict the outcome. And this is for the bone. And you can see a simple fracture with a major uh, open fracture. And the same thing would come to the muscle and tenderness and the nerves. There's a scoring system goes from less to severe. So, as we said, initial assessment and initial treatment. Of course, we have to do irrigation and debridement and stabilize it with external fixator as a temporary or depends on certain cases, maybe it's permanently. Then we have to protect it with the antibiotic. We can use this agent, uh, antibiotic beads or antibiotic impregnated methyl methacrylate beads and sealed with Ioban. And, or we can put a antibiotic block spacer uh, in the defect area. This is for the initial stability. Then, we have also different module of stabilization. We have nail, which is mainly used for long bone. A plating can be used and uh, uh, here, and also external fixator like in the middle pictures. Certain cases, if it's clean enough and the, uh, patient, uh, the center has the expertise, they can go ahead with the free fibular transfer to, uh, to uh, uh, to uh, cover the defect. And also during that, they can do the free flap uh, to cover the open wound. So they will do once uh, one treatment for all. When it comes to the bone defect itself, as we said, we put a spacer and we wait for the antibiotic to work. So the first stage, uh, one of the technique is the muscular technique which can be used in these cases. We can do the brightening to the fracture, repair, repair the soft tissue, and mix the antibiotic with the cement, and then insert the cement on the bone defect area. We can come later on, usually in about four to six weeks, when we remove the cement, and maintain the membrane that left behind it. We keep this membrane as a bucket for the bone uh, graft. We get the marcellized cancellous uh, autograft to fill it, and we put a secondary fixation. Like we see here, the nail or the blade depends on the situation, depends on the segment. And the timing of this second stage, usually we have to clear the wound from infection. We have to make sure that we control the infection and there is no persistent infection. We can test it clinically and we can do the blood test for the ESR on CRB and we get a negative post debridement culture. As we said, done between four to six, why 46? Because the protein morphogen, uh, sorry, the bone morphogenic protein peak at four weeks to six weeks. So that's where the best vascularity of the membrane 
to put it. When it goes beyond the eight weeks, the, the vascularity of the membrane goes down to about 40%. So you want to bone graft when the highest vascularity and high PMP uh, peak level to promote the union at the site. So the fixed size, it can be used for any different size, four to eight centimeter, or it be reported up to 26 uh, centimeters. So can accommodate larger. Then the question will be, where do we get the bone graft to fill the defect? And that's what we will talk in the next few slides. So we can get it from the iliac crest. We can take it from the proximal tibia. We can take the reamer irrigatory aspiration from the other femur to get as much as uh, bone. We threw the special rear device and we collect it and we mix them together. The mixture has to be one to three ratio between bone graft and substitute and usually have an osteoinductive growth factor, BMB2, uh, can be mixed with it. And when we graft it, and you can see here that the bone in the picture here healed completely using uh, the uh, musculae technique with the help from the rear of bone graft. Allograft can be used, it's uh, abundant. We can get it, there is no uh, quantity limit. There is a small risk of uh, having a disease transmission. There's a higher rate of infection, and it can be combined with the autograph. When we look at the other concept also, which is how we can minimize the use of the uh, graft. We can use a gelatine sponge in the middle of the cavity to fill it, and that will make the uh, requirement of the cancellous graft is less by about 21% and make the formed bone is like a tube and instead of uh, concealed solid uh, uh, tube of bone. And this way we can overcome the shortage on the bone graft. So there's multiple technique to help with getting the bone in. Also, we can use a critical large, uh, sorry, the titanium mesh cage for the critical large defect where we can put here as a spacer, then we can use the cage by filling it with the rear and the, the bone chip as a, a console or structural uh, support while it heals. Same things we can do also 3D printed titanium cage filled with bone graft. Uh, to give it more structural uh, uh, graft instead of uh, being as a morselized. And this way we can maintain the integrity and the support of the fragment itself while it's consolidated. How, what we do other than doing a bone graft and using a musculate technique in a different forms, there's also can be used a vascularized free fibula, where we can use a medical or obsilateral fibula with a free bone flap. Fibula or iliac crest or ribs can be used also as an other choice if we don't look for a vascularized. It gives structural support, rapid healing, and independent of the host bed. Usually it will hypertrophy and that will, uh, and that will support it, but also maybe the fibula can be used in, uh, in the humerus or the upper extremity more often due to its size. When we use the fibula here, the, uh, like Taylor in 1975, he used it with a branch of perineal and periosteal vessels uh, with the skin or without, can be used. Donor side morbidity can affect the gait and the strength of the calf and effectual uh, contractures and sometimes perineal paresthesia. Uh, this is confirmed. And it, uh, most of these, of course, it's require a flap to cover the defect. 
to allow it to heal and uh, usually revascularized and uh, improve the blood flow and the uh, scared tissue. And if you, this is there by, uh, by Young Q, uh, where they use a fibula and, uh, instead of the tibia here for the graft, it is, it is uh, superior in their choice because of the graft length, they can accommodate it. Mechanical strength, durability, and safety against infection because you're taken locally. And usually fibula can hypertrophy, and with that, it can accommodate uh, enough forces to weight bear. This is another paper for the humerus, where it shows uh, uh, to use the fibula in a post effect, the proximity. This is the humerus where it's in the Bodden union. And then we use the fibula with the plate to accommodate uh, the defect. Then the other concept is distraction osteogenesis. Uh, Elizabeth Rove in 1991 talk about it, but there's a technique. It's usually mechanically induction of a new bone formation a new vascularization, activation and recruitment of osteoprogenerator cells, and intermembranous uh, ossification. When we talk about distraction as uh, osteogenesis and a bone defect, we talk about we can use it either in two versions. We can use it as an acute or gradual shortening. We shorten the site of the fracture which we followed by a coracotomy and lengthening from a separative uh, metaphysical uh, location. Tibia and humerus can accommodate up to three to four centimeter of sh acute shortening. The other technique is to do, to fix the limb with its own length and to do a bone transport while maintaining the length. The bone transport usually have a high rate of healing up to 90 percent the disadvantage it take longer time and it will require a bone grafting especially at the docking site uh, this is a laser off, which require rings and tension wires coracotomy latency period we have to wait about 10 days before you start uh, uh, you start lengthening gradual distraction between five to one millimeter per day parallel fibrovascular interface and there will be a column of uh, ossification. Uh, you can see here, this is a monorail. Uh, this is the external fixator, sorry. And this is the commuted fracture. Then they removed, the patient was into the rings fixator. And then there will be uh, a lengthening over a nail. slowly, and that's end up with the tibia healed completely using a slowly uh, regenerated bone. Other technique, we can use a monorail. With, again, here we can do acute shortening, compress the fracture site, followed by lengthening from separate. We can do it over a nail, like in the picture on the right, or just with the monorail itself. Usually with the nail, it gives it better alignment and protect the vascular uh, vasculature and the uh, nerve uh, tissue. The other way of doing is a bone transport where here we use a monorail. Again, we do a coracotomy distally and bring it up. You can see the this picture here. And then it's consolidated at that time, it's augmented by a plate fixation. And this plate can be done under Bibo technique. Then there's a technique by uh, uh, G. Uh, G. Hu from the uh, Korea, where they use a plate instead of the external of the external fixator to stabilize the fracture. 
This patient in the left has a orbit fracture, uh, gastrillo type 3B, and he has a skin flap, uh, sorry, skin graft. Then he was referred to the another center where uh, I kept the Elizarov frame for bone uh, defect management. So they use the plate to stabilize the fracture instead of the uh, it is a roof, and then use the monorail to distract until it's finished. And then they put the screws percutaneously because, as you see, the tibia is usually percutaneous and they need to uh, make a, a bigger incision. This is another technique where we do uh, a bone transport nail. This is a 45 uh, female, had multiple injury. She gets reconstruction of the left distal femur with retrograde nail, and she gets a cement spacer, as you see here. Then she had a bone transport nail, which you will see here. So what basically she had, she had the nail came from the top, and she had the plate here, and then distract from proximal to distal, this is the screw that holding the, uh, the middle fragment, which is the transported fragment. And then this is the regenerated bone on the top uh, and the left in the picture on the, on the far uh, right. And it's docking the fracture site distally by forming enough bone and callus formation. This is uh, another technique where instead of using a plate, we can use just the nail itself. No need to put any external fixator. And uh, this way we transport the fragment from top to bottom. And this is, as you said, facilitate early range of motion, elevate the bin site complication and patient mostly satisfied and with the quality of life especially for female uh, after the uh, transporting procedure. But this technique is very expensive at this time. Maybe with the future and widely used, the price will go down. But uh, it's a different, uh, different, uh, different modalities of the same concept. So take home message, uh, there's consensus on uh, for critical a size bone defect and the diagnosis and uh, treatment. The, then the question will be, is the limb salvageable and initial management uh, required? A muscular technique, uh, how and when to use? A different bone graft sources, including rhea, vascularized uh, free fibular graft, uh, distraction or osteogenesis with its different modalities like Elizarov, Munner, monorail, bone transport over a pla uh, plate, and uh, transport nail. And very soon coming, there will be also transport plate. It's, it's still an beta version, but coming in the future. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Saeed, for this uh, very interesting talk about the bone uh, defects, long bone defects, and bone losses uh, after fractures. Thank you so much. Uh, we are ready to uh, receive questions. Uh, the first question will be from me, sir. If, uh, is there a, a limit for uh, the defect that you can replace in the long bone? I don't think so. You can, uh, is, you you can replace any the limit. The limit, is, the limit is the patient being patient with you. Uh, mentally <laughs> and psychologically, uh, because uh, I was doing one patient uh, a few months back. Uh, he has 17 centimeter uh, bone loss. Yeah. And in the femur, and distally, he have a total knee. So the distal femur is not a virgin bone, it's a total knee, yeah. which make it extremely difficult to, to do. But 
the patient wasn't patient enough and he was very stressed and uh, uh, then uh, he he came one day he wanted to do a tumor prosthesis he doesn't want to continue with the lengthening so psychology as a major uh, things when it comes to management these type of fracture so you need to sit to the patient uh, support him and I think these patients, they need definitely a psychiatric consultation, especially when they get very depressed from their injury. Yeah. And are, are there any criteria uh, between selections, between uh, one uh, mood and another uh, uh, method of uh, bone sub substitution, or it's left uh, to the surgeon preference? Well, uh, I used to do a lot of Elizarov before, but now uh, I prefer uh, transport nail yeah. uh, for the cosmesis and uh, the easy. Uh, and uh, so if they can afford it, that's fine. If they cannot, then definitely muscular technique is a beautiful technique and it can be done. Uh, you need to get the other sort. So it depends on it depends on your communication with your patient. Yeah. Now we are ready to receive questions. Uh, uh, the first question from uh, Professor Mohamed Abdal. Uh, from biological point of view, what's the difference between uh, closing a gap of fresh fracture and that of infected non-union fracture? Well, you have to treat uh, the non-union uh, fiction as if it's an infection. Once you eradicate the infection, then you can treat it as a fresh. You need to refresh the edges and bone graft the docking site when you when you finish. Yeah. Uh, you have to eradicate infection first, uh, otherwise uh, you will have ongoing problem. Yeah. yeah. Uh, another question is. Uh, uh, is there a rule for bone substitutes in managing long bone defects? <clears throat> As I mentioned, it has to be a ratio one to three. Yeah. You cannot exceed the bone substitute more than the third. You need bone. Uh, you need a bone. You cannot use a, a substitute more than uh, one third. Yeah, we have another question from Dr. Bah uh, Basharif. Uh, can tibial fractures cause both anterior and posterior compartment syndrome of leg simultaneously? Uh, trauma, yes, and the trauma side time, yes. You can get uh, all compartmental uh, syndrome at the trauma side, depends on the injury itself, yes, it can happen. That's why we do when we do fasciotomy, we we need to release the four compartment. Yes, yes. A question from uh, Dr. Emil Awad: What's the maximum length allowed for uh, non-vascularized bone graft? I think uh, you have uh, already uh, answered this question, sir. From uh, Dr. Another question from uh, Dr. Uh, Dia Leifi. Uh, many thanks, uh, Professor uh, Said. Uh, can you explain the method of lengthening over nail, please? The nail itself, uh, there is two different type. One is, uh, I, when I talk about it, if you want, I can reboot my slide uh, just to show them the different. Uh, so, uh, Okay, so when it comes to, uh, one second. Okay, there is two different things. When you when you have a nail here on the right side, the nail give you your alignment. So when you do the monorail, the monorail will slide, but it will not divert from where it's supposed to go. So the nail will act like a guidance. And usually when you put the nail, uh, you will have a, 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 
the bins will be directly behind the nail if you plan it properly. And you can slide it and uh, uh, slide it from proximal to distal, whatever you want. But this is the nail will give you the position. Then the next things will be uh, here. Here, the nail is doing the monorail technique. The nail is doing the transporting, and, and the plate is giving you the study, the position of the fever, because look at this segment. It's a huge segment. It's a large one. So if you think that you will depend, it depends only on the nail, this nail is non-weight bearing. And you asking your patient for six months not to walk on their legs, they will not listen. So you need to support it. You need to put this plate to fix it proximally and distally to give a support to the nail. These uh, lengthening nail, they made from titanium. They are non-weight bearing nails. There is another one from stainless steel, which is uh, a weight bearing uh, nail, but that's, uh, they are even more expensive. So most people doesn't use them. So they get it support from here. This one, this one, it's a different nail where it can transport by itself. But if you look at the fragment here, it's not a big one. It's the space is a small and we are not going more than about seven centimeters, seven and a half centimeter actually, the lengthening we did for this lady. And uh, so I found that I didn't need to put a plate here because of the study is of the, of the fever. And I told the patient, uh, we, we are not worried about your knee for now. I want the bone to regenerate. Actually, I didn't have her. Uh, I operated her two weeks back where I bone graft the docking area, uh, but the images uh, still that consolidate, so maybe and the next meeting or so, I will present the final product of this lady. I hope that answered the question. Thank you so much. The, the last question from Dr. Bah uh, uh, Basharif, uh, are there any indications of limb salvage and amputations, for example, or amputations, for example, bone loss 20 centimeters and more in pumps explosions? Well, uh, what we mentioned before, we said the depends on the location and the soft tissue. Yeah. If the soft tissue is okay, uh, if the patient reconstructed, if the if the nerves are okay, uh, that's how you assess everything, not just looking at the bone because the bone we can generate bone. I don't have a problem with generating bone. It is the overall picture is the one we need to regenerate. Yes, yes, you are absolutely right. Thank you so much, sir, for uh, this uh, marvelous uh, night with you and uh, Dr. Sernivas. Uh, I hope you all the best and uh, all the people in uh, United Arab Emirates and in India for our brothers and sisters there. Thank you so much. Hoping to see you again and again, Dr. Said and Dr. Sernivas. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank for you. the invitation. Thank you, thank you, thank you, sir. Uh, again, we uh, are, we will spend the first two weeks of the trauma course discussing the uh, general traumatology topics. The uh, next week, uh, we will have uh, more and more talks on uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, discussing all the general topics. And then we will go to the upper limb trauma, then the lower limb trauma, then the spinal trauma, and we will finish with the pediatric trauma. See you, inshallah, on uh, next Wednesday at 10 p.m. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you.